good here. We've got a lot of people standing around in the heat. So I appreciate you all coming on this summer solstice day. It's a warm day. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to talk louder. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, this is a very special day for us. Uh, I'm Carolyn Bach. I'm the president of the St. Kennedy Art Guild. And the Art Guild is extremely proud to be presenting and sponsoring the very first public art dedicated, I'm sorry, the very first public sculpture dedicated to art. Went backwards already. Um, so we last year had an opportunity for a special project and we kind of looked around and decided there was a fair bit of grassroots public art going on with murals. Uh, Joy French had been involved and I want to shout out to Brock Gibson in the back there, Brock, for uh, sponsoring murals on that corner of our property uh, on third. And it's been a, a very important addition to the town. And so we thought, well, what, what about sculpture? Maybe we can do something with sculpture here. So we decided that with this opportunity, we would honor our very first artists in this county, which are the Native Americans. So we called upon Donna Roush Harding, who not everyone knows, is a member of the Chickasaw Nation. And Donna, if you, you come forward just for a minute. And, <laughs> and uh, we're very, very honored to have Donna with us as our, our uh, advisor on this project. And I just wanted her to say just a few words about why this is important. It's important for a lot of reasons. One, because we needed Native American representation. And two, because there's so much history that came out of the Mound Builders, so many tribes that came out of the Mound Builders, Chickasaw were one of them. One of the things when I went to college to be an anthropologist and archaeologist, it was Southeastern Indians, which means I studied a lot about uh, the Mound Builders and those tribes. When the mounds were first discovered, our history books say, oh, they couldn't have built those, you know? There was somebody else that came over. One, one idea was the Phoenicians came and built these mounds. Truly, we've discovered that it was the people that were here. But at first, you don't know. You have no idea what's going on. You might have a mound in your backyard. So archaeology starts, and they start bringing up all these different items that help start telling the story. What's exciting for me and this is that some of these symbols that you will see are still in the tribes. So we know they came out of it. We know they understand them. And this particular symbol is really important to all the different groups. So keep looking, keep picking up those things, and keep telling the story because it's really important for some journey. Jim, do you remember when we were digging at <laughs> that field school? Got down to this one layer and I found pottery. In the allu alluvial fill, it was wood -like. So even that has washed into your yards. It's all here. You just have to move forward. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> property we went to the county commissioners who are here today thank you and the first thing they said was uh, what's it gonna look like <laughs> so we said let me get back to you and we held a contest and that contest was to interpret this very ceremonial bowl that was found just two miles from here out on the big field and so the contest fortunately for us was won by a professional artist <laughs> Leon Bosworth who is uh, an honorary member of our guild. And as honorary member, we rely on the expertise of the professional artists to guide us. And in this case, it was critical because it was a bigger project than we realized. And who hasn't built something and it ended up costing more than you thought, okay? So uh, first thing we did was talk to Leon and um, he kind of brought everything together. He, he had the source for the, the stone that's here that was supporting this, uh, this uh, sculpture. 
Um, he had the people to bring it all together. Uh, Harry Gack couldn't be here, but he was instrumental in bringing this giant stone off of the, the truck that brought it in. That, that was almost a deal breaker when they told me that we had to unload the stone. <laughs> 7,000 pounds was the price. And through Leon's connections and, and expertise, it all came together. And so we partnered with Stan Winkler, Stan, and uh, the two of them uh, made this project come together. And they were so dedicated to this idea that they donated their time. And for professional artists to donate their time, I think. been a guiding light. He studied at the Chicago Institute of Art, which is a big deal for his artists. Uh, he's, uh, he's got national, regional, and local recognition as an artist and a designer. Uh, if you don't know already, he's the part owner and manager of the Silver Sycamore Gallery of Fine Art, which is a real addition to this community. And I'll wait for the train. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll ask Leon. Uh, if you would like to come forward and say a few words about your creation before we unveil it. I'm going to say just a few words. <laughs> okay, good. I took basically, you'll see here that uh, on the drawing that I did, it's quite a bit, a little bit different than uh, what I had represented in my drawing to the group, to the art guild. And so when I started working with this, I, I, I did this looking at this as a flat surface, but from the flat, flat surface I wasn't really uh, with going with this. I, I didn't feel like that I was really representing what I wanted to represent as, as far as the different uh, elements that represent the Native American images. So I teamed up with uh, one of the best metalsmiths that I know, Stan Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, come on over here. <laughs> so with this help and, and working together with them, it, uh, it became more of a reality because we wanted to do this basically with not with the metal sculptures using the metal, but we also wanted to show texture, we wanted to show definition, we wanted to have a feel for what we were wanting to do, and of course representing the Native Americans. And so through that, and working with the different metals that he has, and we kind of put ideas together. So as we did this, it became more three-dimensional, and it became more of where we really wanted to go from the very beginning. When I first got this, uh, the uh, invite to do this, it was like the day before, and I had to have it in at 2 o'clock the next day. So I basically took what the elements was from the piece of art of pottery that was found, and I just elaborated on that. And this is a type of sculpture that I wanted, instead of putting color onto it, we used the natural resources of metal. And the color comes from the sky, it comes from what the light sources are and things like that. And I think after you see it, uh, we did different things to enhance the textures and stuff like that to bring it forth. Not only from a bird's eye view, but also standing in front of it. So it's a type of sculpture, you can go up and rub on it. And, and you'll, you'll be able to feel what the representations are because that's what we represented in the sculpture. So, so he showed up at my shop one morning and said, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got involved in this. <laughs> and Stan's been, he's one of the greatest guys I've ever worked with on a project because he's kind of out in the left field, so I have to kind of go out there with him. So anyway, I guess that's about all I need yeah. to say. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you're welcome. And of course, um, this was built to last. Uh, the 7,000 pound stone and, and Leon's expertise brought all the metal to it. But we had to have financial support for this. So the first thing we did was as an art guild, we did a silent auction. And artists donated their own art. And we were able to raise over $1,000 thank the Art Guild members for that. Um, but the, the biggest chunk came from a grant from the St. Genevieve County Community Foundation. And I'd like to acknowledge Sandra Cabot here today for representing the foundation. I don't know if you want to say anything, Sandra. I, I just uh, want to say that if you uh, 
you know, are, are looking for something to bequeath your money to. You couldn't do better than the St. Anthony County Community Foundation because they do support such great projects in this town and really promote this town. So uh, thank you to the foundation for their help. here today to celebrate what we were able to accomplish together. And so this this is to honor our creative spirits who were here before us and create a tangible connection for members of the community that have Native American heritage. Uh, this is uh, a collective heritage for all of those people. Um, there'll be a metal plaque on the back that'll look like this. Um, and we hope to add a, a little garden of native grasses, which was in Leon's original design. And we're, we're hoping there'll be more grassroots efforts like this for public art in St. Genevieve, because it is an important part of our vibrant community, and it's a gift to the future. And so at this point, I think it's time to unveil our gift to the community. And we'd like to gather as, as a group photo uh, afterwards, so uh, so thank you all for coming. And we're gonna, so Leon, you wanna give me a hand here? <laughs>